Hello, students of the New Testament background. Uh, this is the second time uh, watching the video on the vocabulary. I ask the students to watch this video and read the um, guide, the lecture material, and do the, do the assignment. If you uh, watch this video, it will help you to understand better during the Google Meet uh, online lecture. Okay, let's start with prayer. Dear our gracious Father in heaven, thank you so much that we have this time and opportunity to study the backgrounds of the New Testament. We ask the Holy Spirit to guide our minds to understand and to be better equipped for your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, it's the second class, and the title today is Greek and Roman Historians as a Background for the New Testament. First word, I kind of made a script larger, bigger this time, as you can see. The first word or first person historian that we look for is Herodotus. He is an ancient Greek writer, geographer, and historian born in the Greek city of Halicarnassus, part of the Persian Empire, uh, now in Turkey. He is known for having written the histories, a detailed account of the Greco-Persian wars, the wars between Greece and Persia, he wrote as histories. Herodotus was the first writer to do systematic investigation of historical events. He is referred to as the father of history, a title conferred on him by the ancient Roman orator Cicero. Cicero called him father of history. The second person we look at is Thucydides. They read that way. An Athenian, Athenian historian from Athens and general. His history of the Peloponnesian War recounts the 5th century BC war between Sparta and Athens until the year 411 BC. Thucydides has been dubbed the father of scientific history by those who accept his claims to have applied strict standards of impartiality and evidence gathering and analysis of cause and effect without reference to intervention by the deities as outlined in his introduction to his work. So Thucydides had the method of gathering evidence and witnesses, and then he wrote the history in a scientific way, probably the first one who did it, they say. The next word is Peloponnesian War, as you have just heard. It's an ancient Greek war fought between the Delian League, that means the Athens, and the Peloponnesian League, which was led by Sparta. So Peloponnesian War was between Athens and Sparta. The Peloponnesian War reshaped the ancient Greek world on the level of international relations. Athens, the strongest city-state in Greece, prior to the war's beginning, was reduced to a state of near-complete subjection, while Sparta became established as the leading power of Greece. As you can see, Sparta won this war. Let me show you this picture again that we have seen uh, last time. It was war between Athens and Spartans, and the orange color represents the league by the Athens, and the green color represents 
the, the league by Spartans. So they fought for a long time, I believe. Uh, let's see how long. Uh, it doesn't say. For decades of time, they had this war ongoing, but evidently Spartans won this war. The next one we look at is the word Phoenix. It's actually a name of a deity. Phoenix or Protagonus was the mystic primeval deity of procreation and the generation of new life, who was introduced into Greek mythology by the Orphic tradition. Orphic means also mystical religion, Greek mystical religion. In Orphic cosmogony, Phoenix is often equated with Eros or Mithras and has been depicted as a deity emerging from a cosmic egg entwined with a serpent. If you see the picture, here is the deity and then the serpent, one serpent is kind of uh, shaping, I mean, the like uh, moving around the body of this deity. So it says entwined with a serpent. Now let's look at the person Luke. I believe you all know about Luke. Luke is one of the four evangelists, the four traditionally ascribed authors of the canonical gospels. The early church fathers ascribed to him authorship of both the gospel of Luke and the acts of the apostles. It's not just ascribed, but it is the fact that he was the writer of these two biblical books. The New Testament mentions Luke briefly a few times, and Colossians 4.14 refers to him as a physician, thus he is thought to have been both a physician and a disciple of Paul. We consider Luke as a historian who wrote the history of the early church after the ascension of Jesus, which is the book of Acts. And also he wrote the Gospel of Luke in a very careful way, examining all the data. The next word is myth. I believe you also knew, know this word. It's an ancient traditional story or set of stories, especially one which explains the early history or a cultural belief or practice of a group of people or explains a natural event. Greek and Roman culture has many gods and goddesses in their myth. 우리말로 신화라고 그러는 거죠. Yeah. The next word is Odyssey. The Odyssey is one of the two major ancient Greek epic poems attributed to Homer. It is one of the oldest extant works of literature still read by contemporary audiences. As with Iliad, so it's Iliad and Odyssey, the poem is divided into 24 books. It follows the Greek hero Odysseus, king of Ithaca, and his journey home after the Trojan War. I believe you heard about Trojan War, and they had Trojan horse to win this war, and it was a virtual war, not a real war, in the writings of Homer. Okay, next one is rationalism. Rationalism in Western philosophy is the view that regards reason as the chief source and test of knowledge, holding that reality itself has an inherently logical structure the rationalist asserts that a class of truths exists that the intellect can grasp directly. The rationalist's confidence in reason and proof tends, therefore, to detract from their respect for other ways of knowing. Early modern rationalism has its roots in the 17th century Dutch Republic with some notable intellectual representatives like Hugo, Grotius, 
René Descartes and Baruch Spinoza. You know these philosophers. And the problem is, during the rationalism era, people depended on uh, reason very much. And everything was by the reason. They had the tendency to doubt the Bible and God and the inspiration and revelation of God during this time. Next one is Victorian age. During Victorian age, rationalism was in, pro in progress. Yeah. Victorian age in British history is the period between approximately 1820 and 1914, corresponding roughly, but not exactly, to the period of Queen Victoria's reign, which was 1837 to 1901, and characterized by a class-based society, a growing number of people able to vote, a growing state and economy, and Britain's status as the most powerful empire in the world. For Interestingly, it approximately overlaps with the time of LNG White, which was 1827 up to 1915 when she died. It was 1820 to 1914, and Ellen White's time was 18, she was born in 1827, died 1915, and this is Victorian age. Next one is Joan Hurst, was an American bishop in the Methodist Episcopal Church, and the first chancellor of the American University in Washington, D.C. He authored the History of Rationalism, in which he purposes to show its historical position and to present its antagonism to evangelical Christianity. The guardians of the interests of the church cannot excuse themselves from effort toward the eradication of this error. Uh, he wrote History of Rationalism, and he was critical about this rationalism from the biblical evangelical point of view. So it's available online too, so you may search for this book by John Hurst. Next one is the well-known ancient philosopher Plato. He's an ancient Greek philosopher, student of Socrates, teacher of Aristotle. So it comes like Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, and founder of the Academy, best known as the author of philosophical works of unparalleled influence. Plato has also often been cited as one of the founders of Western religion and spirituality. People sometimes compare the book of Hebrews with his thought of idea. Yeah. So when you study the book of Hebrews, the name of Plato may appear. Okay, the next word. Pericles was a Greek statesman and general during the golden age of Athens. He was prominent and influential in Athenian politics, particularly between the Greco-Persian wars. In the Peloponnesian War, and was acclaimed by Thucydides, a contemporary historian, as the first citizen of Athens. So he probably admired him very much. The next one is Parallel Lives. Last time we uh, studied about Plutarch, and this is his work. Plutarch's Life of the Noble Greeks and Romans commonly called Parallel Lives. Original title was Lives of the Noble Greeks and Romans, and in short, it is called Parallel Lives, or Plutarch's Lives, even shorter. It is a series of 48 biographies of famous men by Plutarch, arranged in pairs to illuminate their common moral virtues or failings, probably written at the beginning of the 2nd century AD. 
In Korean, it's called Plutarch's Yeongungjeon,라고 하죠. Parallel lives. The next one is also historian Tacitus. Tacitus was a Roman historian and politician, widely regarded as one of the greatest Roman historians by modern scholars. He lived in what has been called the Silver Age of Latin literature and has a reputation for the brevity and compactness of his Latin prose as well as for his penetrating insights into the psychology of power politics. The surviving portions of his two major works, the Annals, and the histories, these are his major two works, span the history of the Roman Empire from the death of Augustus in uh, AD 14 to AD 70 in the first Jewish war of 66 to 73. He is the one who wrote about the Emperor Nero, the Roman Emperor Nero. Um, he is the historian who wrote about him, Tacitus. Okay. The next one is Cicero, Marcus Tullius Cicero. Was a Roman statesman, lawyer, scholar, philosopher, and academic skeptic. He was a very skeptical historian who tried to uphold optimate principles during the political crisis that led to the establishment of the Roman Empire. His extensive writings include treaties on rhetoric, philosophy, and politics, and he is considered one of Rome's greatest orators and prose stylists. Orator means the one who speaks, speaker. Very well-known speaker, orator. Next person is also a historian, Livy, Titus Livius, known as Livy in English. Was, was a Roman historian. He wrote a monumental history of Rome and the Roman people titled uh, from the founding of the city, which comprised 142 books covering the period from the earliest legends of Rome before the traditional foundation in 753 BC through the reign of Augustus in Livy's own lifetime. So he covers the long period of Roman history uh, from the beginning. And uh, he wrote many books, 142 books, covering the span of Roman time. The next one we want to look at is Anno, a record of events of a particular year. A single record or entry in a historical chronicle one of the periodic formal reports of an organization or learned field. A Roman historian Livy used an analytic genre to write his history. Anno means year by year. This year, this, this, this happened. The next year, this, this happened. And he wrote history that way. In Korean, it's called Pyeondegi or Yeondegi. So, Livy used analytical, analytic genre for his history book. Next one is Socrates, who was the teacher of Plato. Socrates was a Greek philosopher from Athens who is credited as a founder of Western philosophy and the first moral philosopher of the Western ethical tradition of thought. An enigmatic figure, actually, Socrates authored no texts. He didn't write any books and is known mainly through
through the posthumous accounts of classical writers, particularly his students, Plato and Xenophon. These accounts are written as dialogue. So in the dialogue of Plato, Socrates appears as his teacher, and Socrates' thought is uh, transmitted through these uh, disciples of him. Interestingly enough, he didn't write any books, and Jesus didn't write any books, and also Buddha didn't write any books. Interesting, right? The next thing we want to look at is conversion accounts of Paul. The conversion of Paul the Apostle, also Pauline conversion, Damascian conversion, Damascus, Christophany, and the road to Damascus event. These are the other names. Was, according to the New Testament, an event in the life of Paul the Apostle that led him to cease persecuting early Christians and to become a follower of Jesus. It is normally dated to AD 34 to 37. During this time, one day, it happened, probably, I guess, uh, AD 34, because Stephen was uh, stoned at that time. Paul's conversion experience is discussed in both the Pauline epistles and in the Acts of the Apostles. In the Acts of the Apostles, there are three accounts of Paul's conversion, and in Pauline epistles, he mentions briefly here and there. The last one we look at today is Stoics. Stoicism is a school of Hellenistic philosophy founded by Zeno in the, in the early 3rd century BC. It is a philosophy of personal ethics informed by its system of logic and its views on the natural world. According to its teachings as social beings, the path to eudaimonia, that means happiness or blessedness, is found in accepting the moment as it presents itself by not allowing oneself to be controlled by the desire for pleasure or by the fear of pain, either by the desire of pleasure nor by the fear of pain. To live a good life, they thought, one had to understand the rules of natural order since they thought everything was rooted in nature. Okay, we are finishing up the vocabulary. Now, I wish, I repeat one more time, to listen to this vocabulary for the preparation of the main class. And have a good Sabbath. And we will see you on Sunday morning at 9.30. Okay, thank you and bye.